What's up guys, this is Danny. I wanna do something a little different today because a lot of people have asked me, how loud is the new Mac Pro? And how hot does it get when it's under full stress? Well, let's go and find out right now. This is a totally unscientific test but the controls are pretty good here because in my office right now, the decibels are anywhere near 22 to 24, somewhere in between. Sometimes you hear some cars go by and that's why you see the spike in decibels there. But a quiet room is about 18 to 20, so the controls are pretty good here. The Mac Pro is running right now and it's whisper quiet, but I haven't done anything intensive with it yet. So you can see the decibels right there, right around 23, 24, somewhere around there. Sorry, I do not have a fancy microphone set up, but I'm gonna put the Blue Yeti microphone right next to the Mac Pro, so if it makes any noise at all, it should capture it. To register the changes in heat, I'm gonna use a simple infrared thermometer gun to show me how much the metal temperature is changing and also how much the temperature is changing where the fans are. So let's go ahead and get started. The engineering is simple. It's got a unified thermal core. So the top is where the hot air is expelled. So it's going to be hotter on the top. So it's registering 85 degrees on the top. If you point the infrared gun towards the bottom, then you will notice that it's at least a 10 degree difference where the air intake is. So of course, cool air is being taken in there. And if you just move up, then the temperature rises towards the top. So it just goes to show you that this unified thermal core is working. So let's start with the Mac Pro when it's just turned on. I've done a little bit of web browsing, gone on Twitter, watched a few YouTube videos, but it's still whisper quiet. Take a listen. That is not a joke. I actually had to turn it up a little bit just so you can hear the static in the background. It's that quiet when it's on your desk, you're not gonna even notice that it's there. With regular computing, with YouTube videos and web browsing and things like that, it does change the temperature a little bit. So after being on about 40 minutes or so, it's about 85 degrees at the top. All right, let's start with iMovie real quick. And a lot of people use Final Cut Pro, but I use iMovie once in a while as well. So the best way to do it is just to export a file here. I'm gonna go ahead and export this Oppo N1 Cyanogen Mod Edition video. Go ahead and check that out if you haven't checked it out already. And I'm going to go ahead and export this. And this is going to stress the CPU some and you're gonna see it on the CPU activity monitor and you're gonna see that spike. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this so you don't have to sit there and watch this the whole time. Let's see if it changes the heat and the sound of the fans. If you look in the background at the CPU monitor, you will see that it's been stressed the whole time I exported the entire video and still I can't hear the fan. I mean, if you look at the decibel reading here, it's exactly the same as it was before. So this is about an hour's worth of use and it hasn't changed too much here. 88 degrees, only about a three degree difference from before. So doing very well so far on the stress test. And on the top, you will see that it's 95 degrees now so a little bit of a change on the actual export of air on the top from the fan, but 95 degrees, it seems really high, right? But trust me, it does not feel hot at all, actually. it's The air is actually fairly cool, and it's cool to the touch still. It's a little bit warm, but it's not that bad whatsoever. Let's try another test besides video exporting. There's this cool little terminal prompt that you can use to maximize your CPU use. And if you put this prompt in over and over again, then it will just max out your CPUs and just spike it to 100%. I'm gonna speed this up for time's sake though, but you can see there's multiple things running in the background, activity monitor, iMovie. I'm even recording audio while I'm doing this to pick up the microphone of what's happening with the Mac Pro. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let this run and I'll be right back. To stop this crazy test, all you have to do is put kill all yes and it stops everything and you will see that the CPU rampage stops and then you can go back to normal. All right, so after the CPU rampage, let's go to the Blue Yeti mic. All right, I'm just recording this voiceover just to show you how quiet this Mac Pro is. If you look at the screen still, the CPU is still being maxed out and the microphone is still right next to the Mac Pro. 
Now, there is a subtle little whir or a little bit of a fan noise, but you can barely hear it. Now, just try to listen. There is a slight humming, and you can hear that. Let me try to get the mic closer. That is literally it, folks. That is the only amount of sound that you actually get out of the Mac Pro. I mean, it's still whisper quiet, and this thing is under 100% CPU load or close to it the entire time. So I'm just letting it run, and it's still cool to the touch. Pretty amazing, huh? Of course, the more we put the CPU and GPU to the test, then it's going to raise the temperature. But 102 degrees, it just seems ridiculous. But I'm telling you right now, it just it is just warm to the touch. It's not that bad. It's not even what you would call hot. It's just warm to the touch on the top. If you remember the beginning control, it's about a 22 degree difference so far after all of this CPU testing. But if you guys were wondering, Final Cut Pro runs like a boss on the Mac Pro because it takes advantage of the dual GPU configurations here and I'm just starting to make my transition into Final Cut Pro that's the reason why I bought a Mac Pro from the beginning is because I wanted to transition into Final Cut Pro and I want to transition into 4k hopefully later this year and hopefully earlier if I can like some of the other guys are doing right now but i wanted to do a quick 4k export test i had something from the galaxy note 3 and it was about 30 some odd seconds of 4k footage and if you looked it said it was like 2.3 gigs or something like that so i wanted to export it and see how much it would stress the cpu on the cpu monitor but i was pleasantly surprised that it exported super quick I know that was extremely random, but I had to throw that in because I just found it by accident. I exported and did not expect it to export that fast. So let's do a final test here. I'm going to export a full length review from Final Cut Pro. And this is about two hours of continuous use on the Mac Pro. And now I can finally hear the fans ramping up. And this is about a 10 decibel change from before. So it's about twice as loud as it was when it was on idle. Now you can hear it a little bit more. Now listen, this is about the loudest the fan gets right now. That is the loud as the fan gets and it's a little bit audible but it's still lower than my MacBook Pro or Retina display fans when they go off. The temperature is a little bit higher here. You can see it's at 101 degrees at the very top and where the fan is exporting all that air, you can see it's 113 degrees now. Now that seems a little bit crazy, right? 113 degrees, but trust me, it's just warm air. It's not that bad. It's definitely still touchable on the top of the Mac Pro. It's actually just warm to the touch still. And just to show you that the fans are going full speed, look at what it does to this piece of plastic. It keeps it in the air and you can see how powerful these fans actually are. And when it's done exporting here, watch when the fans cut off. The piece of plastic just falls right off. So very efficient fans, very powerful fan. And once it goes off, it takes about a minute or so to get it back to where it is just non-audible. So in conclusion, even under very heavy CPU and GPU use, the fan is very quiet still compared to a normal PC. You can tell by the decibels and actually the heat is not that bad as it registers a little bit higher but if you think there's about a 30 degree change there where the heat is expelled from the top. That is over two hours of use and a lot of abuse on the CPU and GPU. So it just goes to show you how efficient the thermal core is on the brand new Mac Pro. All right guys, well that does it for me with this video. Hopefully that answered a lot of questions that you guys have had on the new Mac Pro regarding heat 
and noise that comes out of it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so for there is a ton of more coverage on the Mac Pro and other tech goodness. So make sure you subscribe and make sure you follow me on Twitter at Super Scientific. For any kind of questions that you may have, go ahead and hit me up at Super Scientific and I'll do my best to answer them. And make sure you give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.